The remaining item that we have for section 3.2 is a revisit of the, uh, the concept that I playfully called function algebra. Uh, that was the idea when we took two functions and we added them to build a new function or we subtracted them to build a new function and then we were able to do that, uh, uh, do information from it, uh, find its domain, find values, etc. Uh, and we can actually do the same thing with a graph. Uh, this actually happens quite a bit because we normally don't have a nice neat function. What we have is data and we have pictures. But from that data and pictures, what I like to do is build something else. Uh, so for example, right now what I have is this hypothetical situation where we're looking at two graphs, the revenue and the cost of producing a certain amount of, let's just call them widgets. Okay, uh, so the number of widgets is on the x-axis and the dollars in revenue and thousands of dollars is along the y and the cost of producing them is along the x, or excuse me, along the y over here. Uh, and again, thousands of dollars. So how do I go about finding a profit function? Well, profit, let me call it P of X, is basically the money coming in, my R of X, minus the cost that it took me, right? So money coming in, money coming out. Functionally, this is basically the new function, R minus C, okay? And that's basically what we have here. So R minus C represents my profit function, and I want to know what's my profit function when I sell 50 widgets. Well, what we know this to do is we can break this up into R of 50 minus C of 50. And what we can basically do is look at their values. So what's R of 50? Well, when I come look at here, right, right about here's 70. So how about we call that 75? And again, that's thousands of dollars. And then C of 50, when I come up here, that looks like it's right on 40. So when I put this together, it looks like 35. So if we, if my little company produces 50 widgets, right, I expect to have a profit of $35,000 based off of the data that I have for revenue and cost and using this concept of a, of a function algebra. Uh, what about R minus C of 100? What's my profit function when my number of widgets is 100? Well, again, we'll find R of 100 minus C of 100, and then we just go read the graph. Uh, R of 100, that looks like it is 100, oops, minus C of 100, well that looks, how about we estimate that around 50, all right, so it looks like my company, all right, is going to make about 50 grand if we produce 100 widgets, all right, and of course, um, you know, perhaps that's what I want to do, right, more, more things, so I'll tell my you know, I'll make sure my production line reduces 100 of these things. Um, yet another question, and maybe a tougher one. Uh, here what I've been doing is giving you guys input, and we've been calculating output. But here, right, what is my profit function? Again, uh, call that P of X. When does P of X equal to zero? Okay, and so what we really want to know is when of R of X minus C of X, right, because that's what that means. When's that equal to zero? And so the way I'm going to use the graphs here is let's look at the algebra here first before we do that. If I add CX to both sides, hopefully this is no surprise, but we're trying to find when does my revenue function equal my cost function. If I can find when they're equal, then I basically have a profit of zero. Money's not coming, you know, the money coming in and the money coming out are exactly equal, so my profit is zilch. So perhaps to answer this question, maybe what we need to do is either graph the cost function with the revenue together, or we graph the revenue to the cost function. So some way, somehow we need to do that. I think because there's more values along this revenue, it's probably easier to move this over there. So let's see, we have zero and 30 as a data point, so there's a cost value. We have 50 and 40, so there's a cost value. We've got 150, so there's a cost value. And then we have 150 and 60, right? And so there's a cost value. And so if we, let me put it in red here, if we do that, right, and kind of maybe mimic that that's going to keep going down, I can see, right, that there's one location where the profit's going to be zero, 
and there's another location down here where the profit's zero, if, especially if we keep extending that revenue function. And again, this is an assumption. We don't really know because the graph uh, isn't showing, but if we just assume it keeps going down. Um, so uh, what we have then, it looks like one of the values looks like it's just right around, right? Uh, let's try to go here. So half of this is 25. Half of that is about 12.5. So it looks like one of our values is probably like, let's just say 14 to 15, all right? So it looks like about 14 to 15 widgets is gonna be an area where my revenue matches the cost. And then if we make this assumption out here, again, that's 175 and half of that. So, you know, 160, 160th, 170th. So when we come here, right, it looks like another value is probably about 161 to 162-ish. Somewhere right in there in that ballpark and figure uh, is what we have. You know, maybe we even say 14.5 and 161.5 uh, respectively. Of course, if I wanted more accuracy, you know, I, I'd probably uh, generate a better graph. Uh, you know, maybe put some grids in there, um, whatever the case might be. But for, for general purposes here, uh, we're basically able to use a picture to answer questions about a function and its algebra. All right, we built a new function, the profit function. We use those two graphs to find values for the other one. And you talk about something that happens in real life. This is the one thing that happens here. We end up using Excel spreadsheets and all kinds of stuff to analyze and look predict, all that other good stuff. And we'll actually experiment with some of that stuff as we learn more functions as we go along. But that officially wraps up 3.2. I think I've covered all the ground. There might be more in there, but uh, what I've covered is the big point. So make sure you, you understand it. Make sure you can do your homework. Talk about it on Canvas. Come see me for office hours if needed. And uh, let's keep pressing forward. we got one more section to do this week, and I'll see you guys for those videos coming up shortly.